This is your Tech News Briefing for Thursday, July 21st. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. For the last two years, it's been good to be a food delivery company. Demand was high as people stayed home, and revenue rose with more restaurants and customers signing up. But as the economy slows and inflation soars, the best of times may be over for some delivery giants. According to market research firm Yipit Data, the total number of orders for food delivery companies in the second quarter of this year grew by 11 percent. But that's a big drop from the 88 percent growth they experienced during the same period in 2020. So how do these companies plan to grapple with the first major slowdown in their short histories? And what can they do to convince investors they're still on solid ground? Joining us to discuss this is our gig market reporter, Preetika Rana. Hi, Preetika. Nice to have you back on the show. Great to be back on the show. So these food delivery apps are still growing. They're just growing more slowly. So what are companies like DoorDash and Uber Eats doing to keep customers spending money? Right. So they have rolled out a host of measures this year. One is just they're sweetening the deal to try to convince customers to become subscribers. Now, subscribers pay a monthly fee, but they enjoy discounts on food. They enjoy no delivery fees. And from the company's perspective, subscribers actually spend a lot more than non-subscribers. And they have higher order values. So it's in their best interest to get as many customers to become subscribers. And then what the apps are also doing is they're tweaking their apps to trigger more spending and moving beyond food to give people more reasons to return. So, you know, you can now order everything from toothpaste to toilet paper to your groceries to flowers, even a Thanksgiving turkey on, you know, DoorDash and Uber Eats. And as far as restaurants are concerned, they're negotiating deals to keep them from increasing delivery prices. So DoorDash negotiated a deal with McDonald's where they can't raise delivery prices more than 30 percent of what the in-store price is. And at the same time, they're also diversifying beyond delivery and offering new services to restaurants. They've started giving restaurants that have a history of good sales on the app, they've started giving them loans. They've also started investing in in in-store technology for restaurants. So you know how we all got used to scanning the QR code at restaurants. You know, DoorDash recently bought a company that lets you scan the QR code and it lets you order food and pay for your food on your cell phone. So what DoorDash is essentially doing is for understaffed restaurants, it's saying, hey, use this technology and better manage your staff. Is that helping with some of the complaints that we heard from restaurants earlier in the pandemic? I mean, they're having their costs rise with inflation, and a lot of them had raised concerns about huge demand from delivery making it difficult to run their restaurants. So how are they reacting to these delivery apps kind of stepping in? Some of the big chains are investing in behind their own delivery um, network and their own delivery apps. So this way, they don't have to pay a commission on every order. You know, restaurants get all the consumer data as opposed to the apps. But I think both restaurants and delivery apps need each other. You know, it's it's a give and take. Right. You need something to deliver in the end. I wonder how analysts and investors are reading into, you know, both this slowdown and the efforts that these delivery companies are making to address the slowdown. It's a tough time for these companies. Analysts and investors are definitely worried. Remember, these apps are relatively new. The food delivery industry hasn't faced a recession. So the big question that analysts are asking is, do consumers start treating food delivery as a necessity or as a luxury when the times turn? And that question remains to be answered. There are some early signs that in places outside the U.S., you know, the U.K.'s Deliveroo recently slashed its full-year guidance. They said, you know, we're facing consumer headwinds. And we don't think they're going to be spending as much as we thought they would be. So early signs are definitely pointing to a pullback. So we've talked about DoorDash and Uber Eats. What about the third biggest player in this market, Grubhub? How is it faring? Well, Grubhub is in the midst of a big reckoning. So 
in many ways, Grubhub pioneered this industry. You know, they weren't doing delivery back in the day. You know, they started with online orders and restaurants would fulfill the deliveries on their own, on their end. But Uber and DoorDash quickly came in and decimated that model with gig workers doing deliveries. They had a lot of venture capital money. So they quickly ate up the food delivery market. And it's startling. Before the pandemic, Grubhub had 21% market share. Now it's fallen to some 10%. So Grubhub's parent company, which only bought it a year ago, is looking to sell the company again, just given the competitive pressure. Now, unlike DoorDash and Uber, which still managed to grow in the first quarter compared to last year, even though it was its slowing growth, Grubhub's orders actually fell. So Grubhub is looking at ways to turbocharge growth. And one of the ways in which they are doing this is that earlier this year, they inked a partnership with Amazon where all of, you know, Amazon Prime's more than 200 million subscribers are going to get Grubhub Plus, which is their sort of, you know, monthly subscription for free. And it might help them take back some of that market share that they've lost. All right. I guess we'll just have to see how this plays out. That's our reporter, Preeti Karana. Thanks for joining us, Preetika. Thank you so much. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. And if you like our show, please rate and review it. You can do that wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.